Hey guys, Piggy Streams here with Kane Beats, and I'm here with the boys in. Oh, Bray. 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 What's up? What up, man? Uh, so, who are you guys, and what instruments do you play? So, one side. I'm. Uh, my name's Corey. I play bass. I'm Alex, aka Brad Vocals. <laughs> uh, I'm Terrence. I play guitar. Stevie Drums. Oh yes. That's us. Perfect. Um, so. Have you guys started with instruments you're on, or were you kind of put into the positions like a vocalist or a guitarist or stuff like that? Good question. Um, I started off as a guitarist for like many years, many bands, and then um, yeah, I just I joined a different band, a metal band, one day, and they needed a bass player. No one wanted to play bass. <laughs> yeah, so I had to play bass. Oh so, yeah, that is a good question. Actually, uh, I uh, I started out on drums. Played drums for 10 years, played in various bands, did various recordings as a drummer, and then, uh, I don't know, one thing led to another and I became a vocalist and been riding that wave ever since. But uh, as far as being a drummer, it's definitely helped out with that vocal flow and just general understanding of music and how to count and, and all that. Sometimes it's a bit lacking for vocalists, so it's uh, been working out well. I. Um, Pretty much been playing guitar. I mean, I did play saxophone, and tenor sax in grade seven <laughs> band. So, but I was playing guitar at the time. So we'll just we'll chalk it up to yeah, pretty well been playing guitar for. Uh yeah, I've been playing drums forever since I was like two. Yeah. Kind of always had every instrument in the house though, so I fucked with everything. But the main one's been drums forever. So you have a new album out, Mad Season. It's been a couple months now, two months, give or take. No, a week. A week, wow. Yeah, I lost count. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. Yes, it's been out for literally a the week. The first singles came out, like, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, that's how it. do you feel this album or the singles have been received? Um, above any of my personal expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, just us being on tour right now and the record being so new and uh, seeing a, a crowd that is uh, that receptive to our new material. Uh, a, a lot of people already know uh, some of the new songs live, so it's uh, it's quite encouraging, truthfully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, there's four of you, so I guess if each of you could put a song on a mixtape that's not your own to describe the theme of the album, what would it be? Hmm. Oh, holy shit! <laughs> uh, well, like I'm a song that's not ours. Like, yeah, that describes well, the to describe the album. I. Uh, don't stop believing. Mm. Oh wow! Yeah, good shit. By uh, Helix, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 oh, no, it's Journey, right? Yeah, yeah, it's Journey. Yeah. Yeah. I had oh, a Journey I song in mind too. It was uh, any way you want it. Yeah. Well, wow. what's that Chumba Wumba song? I get knocked down. Can yeah. I get up again? Yeah, that's a good one. Top top top. top. That's the rig, man. Yeah. Chumba Wumba. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Very well done, anyway. Uh, Stevie, would you have one? Uh, Andy. I can't think of anything. Yeah. It's a tricky one. He had a rough night and uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little slower this afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know quite frankly. I really so, can't. It's a really good question, but that's really hard to I think we, I think we nailed it with Chumble One. <laughs> 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 I think that's pretty good. Yeah. 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 Let's go. It's with probably that. like really good songs, there's gotta be there's gotta be ones that are better, like more meaningful, but that's the reality of the record, right? But yeah, we're just burnt right now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you yeah, like those songs, it's I get knocked down. You know, it's it's a basically about getting fucked over but pulling yeah, through. Yeah, essentially. Theme of the record. Okay, so um, you have three albums out, and each one has a French song on it. Are you planning to do that for future releases? And why you why do you put the French song onto the album? Uh, just I'm uh, I mean I'm from Montreal. I'm from Quebec. I'm a Frenchie. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's just been, oh, it's always been important for me as an artist, uh, just as a French-speaking uh, artist. Uh, you, uh, uh, we tour with a lot of international bands uh, that are often, I don't know, German or whatever, and, and it's, everybody speaks, uh, speaks and uh, sings in English. It's the universal language. It's, uh, I get it, it's important. That's how we get our message across. That's how I'm doing this interview with you right now. That's how the people at home understand me, but uh, there's that part of me that's just, uh, I need to get it out, man. I yeah. need to speak French once in a while, and, and and to have that connection whenever we we play those French songs mm -hmm. live, whether it's uh, back home in Quebec or 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 
all the French speaking countries in Europe because we tour mainly Europe, yeah. uh, you know, whether it's uh, France, obviously, or even like Belgium, Switzerland, Luxembourg. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's fun to have that uh, that extra little spark or that, uh, I don't know, it's, I can't really properly describe it, but it's, it is something that is important for me. Uh, it's something that they're all cool with, fortunately, and uh, it is something that I want to repeat in the future, definitely. Yeah. No, definitely, just like I'm being from Russia. Okay. I've seen like Russian bands, like Melkor bands, and it's the same thing for me, so. And, 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 and I feel just, uh, grew up, you know, speaking French, uh, I feel like, uh, there are a lot more, I, I feel like I have more words to paint a picture and get my point across. Uh, and yeah, that's 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 fun too. Yeah. <laughs> so still being a relatively small band compared to some other bigger bands, you only do have three major albums out. If you were to rearrange the release of them, would you, and which order? Uh, wait, well, repeat that question please. Okay, so you have three albums out. Three albums out. Would you rearrange the order of the release? Meaning, uh, put out like Save. Salvation first. Uh, no, no. I mean, for, as far as I'm concerned, no. I feel like it's actually like a, a, a logical evolution. You know, we started out really a bit more hardcore oriented. Uh, n no singing whatsoever. Lots of mosh. Lots of breakdowns. You know, uh, very heavy and, and slowly but surely. You know, with uh, with uh, Salvation, there was uh, you know added melody, mm -hmm. uh, a bit more variety. <clears throat> And now with Mad Season, you know, it's 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 that, but we brought that to the next level. Uh, I feel like uh, this new record, Mad Season, is a lot more diverse. Uh, it definitely demonstrates some growth uh, musically. Is, uh, even personally, I don't know, it's just, uh, yeah, um, I, I wouldn't have it any other way, truthfully. Okay. I think it makes more just sense the way it goes. Um, whether as a performer or as a fan, what is the craziest thing you've seen live in a show? Mm. Oh, craziest thing. Um, one time at the the first time I played Graz Rock, um, this guy came up on stage, like ran right onto the drum riser and was like hanging on my cymbals, dropped his pants completely naked, and then the security guard came from behind and picked him up and tossed him into the crowd, just like hanging down, ass naked, completely ass naked. Oh man, that was dope. Lit. I don't know. There's a lot of shit though. First thing that comes to mind is isn't even a, an Obey the Brave concert. I just went and saw uh, I went and saw this tour, Architects, and Straight from the Path, and uh, uh, Stray were playing in Montreal, and then straight up like uh, security guards weren't doing their job, and and kids kept falling into that little area between the stage and the barricades, and then Straight from the Path straight up stopped the song, and they talked to security during this, and they're like, "Aren't you going to catch these kids?" They're like hitting their heads on concrete, you know, on the floor and shit, and security just nodded no. So then kids proceeded to lose their shit, and like there was literally 40, 50 kids in between that little area between the stage and the barricade, moshing. Just, uh, I could see my friend Dave, uh, the promoter, just freaking out, being like, oh no, I'm gonna get sued, liability, and this and that, but it was, uh, it was tight, man. It was, it was pretty cool, I gotta say. <laughs> That's sick. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know, I, um, sit, seen like a couple people get like pretty mangled yeah, <laughs> in the pit. Yeah, it's um, a pretty crazy pit. Yeah, course. unfortunately, yeah, that, which is, which it is happens. Unfortunate. It happened to me though, like when I was younger, I remember I was at like an, an Every Time I Die show or something in Toronto and, um, I, uh, I was, I remember I was in the pit and like one minute, I I had like jumped in the air and then all of a sudden I just I took like a leg or an arm or something to the sternum and it just like completely got fucking laid out and yeah just had to kind of cower in the corner for the rest of the show. So. What's the venue? Is it uh, in Worcester, Mass? What's the uh, Palladium? Palladium with the, the small room upstairs. Uh, yeah, upstairs when kids uh, playing there and having like dozens of kids. Not at, uh, not at an Obey the Brave show, but jumping off the balcony up there. I always think that that's so fun. That's it's, it's just like insane, just like like a waterfall of humans, like moshing. It's just like ridiculous. Actually, I have a better one. First, uh, the the first time I ever saw Hatebreed in play in Ottawa, and I was like, I don't know, 13 or 14 years old. 
and it was the first time I saw moshing and shit like that. And I, I uh, like, I walked in. I was wearing like an old navy shirt, like, <laughs> you know, like blonde hair. I still, <laughs> I, I was preppy as fuck. And I just walked in. And I saw this, and hate breed started. And there was a guy like, like stage left or whatever. And as soon as they like hit the first chord, he just started doing backflips, and he did it for the their entire fucking set, <laughs> <laughs> undisturbed. Constant backflips. <laughs> what the fuck? And I, yeah, it was must, back be, must be nice, right? Yeah. Back it too. Yeah. So we're getting down to the last six questions. Well, um, if you were to change one thing about the Canadian music scene, what would it be? Uh, shorter, it shorter, shorter drives. drives right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Yeah. 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 Short, make it smaller. Hundred <laughs> um, percent. Yeah, that's the big one, right? Yeah. But nah, man. I mean, we love touring home, man. Uh, uh, yeah, I feel like not enough bands tour Canada. Uh, I feel like, uh, you know, when we were in the center, I, I definitely felt it. Like, they don't get a lot of love from, from, from bands. I feel like uh, some of the scene is unfortunately kind of struggling or hurting because of that. But, uh, you know, we made it a point to draw, drive across the country and be here tonight. Uh, I'm excited to be back in Alberta. It's been uh, two long years already. So, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I want to focus on, man. Rocking out. Um, if you were to give a piece of advice to someone who wants to be in the music industry or someone you've worked with, what would it be? You gotta put in work, buddy. Hang in. It's like anything. Like, like any job, you gotta work if you wanna have any kind of success with it. So, Like any job, like any relationship, you gotta put the time and effort into it. You gotta do it for the right reasons. You gotta do it for the love. And uh, yeah, just... Yeah. Grip through, through, man. Just knock on a bunch of doors. Just don't ever stop, and don't expect anyone to do it for you either. You know, yeah. just keep on gotta, keeping on. Yeah, you gotta punch in, buddy. Joe keep dude. on keeping on. Just give her, as they say out here in Alberta. Yeah. Just give her. Yeah, just keep give her. her. Watch Fubar every day and just give her. Yeah. yeah, I already told you. I fucking play the bass. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there a song you perform live yet? You don't always enjoy performing live, but you can do it for the fans. <laughs> wow, wow. wow, that's a loaded question. I, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be transparent. For me, uh, there's a song on the first record, It Starts Today. It was one of our first singles. I'm with you on that. It's it's like more of a, th a thrashier song, a faster song. It's a bit more metalcore-ish. I feel like uh, you know, it's one of those songs the kids at home know, but it's uh, I feel uh, like where we're going with this new record and where that was, it's yeah. just... Uh, Sort of drifting away from that, but I'm glad we did it. It's not like I, it's not like I hate it, yeah. but uh, yeah, that's not my favorite moment of the set. <laughs> but if if kids are stoked to hear it, then so be it, man. That's yeah, that's a single from the first record. So yeah. if other yeah, it's yeah. like we're playing music. It's not like yeah. it's actually a chore. Or anything. Yeah, it's, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and if fans dig it and they get into it, it like yeah, yeah, yeah. renews yeah, your. There's some good stuff on that song. I like, I like playing that song. True. I get to do shit on that song. It's cool. Um, so Alex, this is kind of directed towards you more. Yes. Um, so you were also the Spice Icon, or kind of the Spice Icon. Are you planning to split your time between the two bands, or are you putting more time towards one than the other? Uh, I mean, I'm already investing in both bands. Uh, with Despise, we are back, but it's just uh, it's like a part-time thing in a sense that we can only commit to a handful of shows per year. Uh, this year, we played about, we've toured for the equivalent of maybe two weeks this year. Maybe we'll do a week at the end of the year, who knows, but uh, uh, for the Spies, the, the focus is family, that is the priority, uh, and for Obey the Brave, I mean, that's that's our full-time rig, man. That's that's our priority. Uh, I mean, we're gonna be spending the next, you know, we're spending two months on, on tour right now, uh, relentless. So uh, that's definitely, uh, uh, I mean, that's definitely, uh, yeah, I don't know, man, I'm committed. Man. Okay. Um, okay, I guess pros and cons of touring, one of each. Pros and cons. One pro and con. I'm just very tired from all this driving, truthfully. Okay. But uh, aside from that, as I said, we're just uh, making a living out of playing music and meeting cool people across the world, and yeah, it's it's a it's a good job. Yeah, yeah. For, I'm, with pro, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Play shows, meet cool people, drink beer. Can't can't complain. Cons, yeah, like it's not all like 
It's a lot of work for like the 45 minutes that you have to be playing. Like, it's a lot of fucking around, to be honest. Like, there's a whole lot of shit you gotta do. You gotta drive, you gotta stay up all night driving and doing this, do all sorts of fucking bullshit. But it's worth it, you know what I mean? It's the whole point. So like you put in a ton of work, like 20 hours worth of work to play that 45 minutes, it's all worth it. But, mm -hmm. but it is worth it. Yeah. The older I get, the, uh, the, the homesickness gets uh, a bit more overwhelming, I would say. But, uh, yeah, man, this is this is who we are. This is what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm I'm this, you know, I'm the I'm right there with you too. Like, I love everything about it. You know, it's what I've always wanted to do and all that, like sort of shit. But like, yeah, you just you know, you miss home. You miss your dog. You, you know, you miss your your girl. And but that's the way it goes, right? Like, even if you're working a full time job, you know, you're gone for ten hours of the day, and you miss home and shit too. So like, whatever you can. I message, you can phone call, and it just makes your time at home that much better, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to find a way to, you know, not wish it away while you're on the road. Enjoy, you know, take it all in, and then you know, just really appreciate your time at home, and then you get the best of both worlds. Yeah. Okay. So, kind of the last question, you've mentioned in past interviews, kind of artist art and what goes around comes around to the reason why you support smaller bands or photographers and all that. Do you still feel that's true today? I, I don't understand the question. So, in past interviews, you've talked about the reason why you support like smaller bands, photographers, all that. Is the reason because art is art? Um, what goes around comes around. Do you still feel that's true? Like supporting like uh, uh, local, like and uh, like, yeah, I mean, or uh, even a photographer with, who doesn't really not necessarily know what they're doing. No, I mean, with, with, with this with this tour, for instance, uh, we have our friends from uh, from Quebec City get the shot, you know prime example of what you just said for us it's always important to you know bring our friends on tour and, and have that camaraderie and, and, and just uh, a lot of bands are very competitive nowadays and for me it's just uh, that's, that's not how I perceive things so um, but uh, what you know mad season is a great example of, of what you just said as well you know we pr uh, worked with a friend Dean who produced the record uh, we worked with another friend that uh, did all the artwork, illustration, all that. Uh, whether it's photography, videos, we always deal with homies, you know, and it makes it. Uh, they get us, you know. They're part of the. They're part of the boys, and it, it makes the whole thing a lot more uh, personal and, and sort of true, you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And even down to like, like you know, the crew we're working with on this tour, like, um, you know, you see like. It's about giving like, people a shot, right? You know? Yeah. And then, and then they, you know, they come through for you. Like, uh, you know, our FOH on this tour, he's, you know, he's got experience like in the field, but this is his first tour here. Yeah. In front of the house, and he's fucking killing it. And then, you know, um, the guy we got slinging merch for us, like he's a photographer, and this is his first tour doing merch. <coughs> well, maybe second, but anyways, yeah, they're. We're good at spotting talent, man. Yeah, that, that <laughs> hidden talent. Next thing you know, man, they blow up. They fucking do the sound for <laughs> stick to your gun. <laughs> yes. You know it is what it is. What's up, Martin? <laughs> Basically, last question: Is there anything you want to add, touch on? Mad season's out right now. Been out for a week. Um, pick that shit up. You know, we're super proud of it. It's uh, it fucking rips. Yeah. She fucking rips. Yeah, <laughs> grab the record. Yeah. Street Apologies record. for the lack of energy. It fucking so rips. It. It fucking rips. <laughs> yeah, she does. Come it's out and send it. You know, watch for tour dates. Come out to a show where uh, you know we got more shit in store for the rest of the year. So yeah, if, if you're just getting to know us, go to obeytobreak.com. There's all sorts of cool shit there. Whatever you want to keep track of tour dates, pick up the record, merch, anything you want, man. Just uh, just hit us up. Uh, we always like hearing your stories. We try to interact as much as possible. So mm -hmm. to everyone out there, thank you very much for the support. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. Peace, Peace man.